Today, I will be walking you through how to build an end-to-end -end fraud detection model on Predibase. We'll cover how to connect data, how to quickly train a few baseline models in a declarative way, and how to query those models using a language we call PQL. So first, let's connect data. At Predibase, we make it very easy for you to connect data. You can just do it through a few clicks. You can connect your structured data wherever it lives from sources like uh, Snowflake, BigQuery, and if you have unstructured data like images, text, those might live in sources like Amazon S3 or Google Cloud Storage, you can also connect your data there. Um, if you have your data stored in your local directory, you can upload them using um, the file. And today we're going to use a credit card data set originally from Kaggle. We made this data set available in Ludwig. And Ludwig is the open source project behind Predibase algorithms. So there are a lot of uh, data sets we added in Ludwig and you can easily access them through Predibase. Um, to use the credit card data set today in Ludwig, click public data sets here and then you will find the uh, credit card data set. So this is great because I have already imported, for example, if you want to use like other data set, you can just select them and click import. So now you can see we have the uh, credit card fraud data set here. This is the one we're going to use. Before we create our first model, let's understand a little bit more about our data set. So the data set contains the transactions made by credit cards, and it only has numerical variables. Due to confidentiality issues, we cannot provide original features. So here, when you click into the data set from this data tab, you will see V1 to V28, they are the principal components of the original data sets. And the only features which are not uh, been transformed are time and amount. So if you want to see the values of those features, this is a great time for you to explore the PQL query editor. PQL stands for predictive query language. Uh, in Predibase, it also supports regular SQL queries. So make sure you have the right connection from public data sets, uh, select the engine that is active, and our data set here is credit card fraud. So using this simple query, you can take a look at the values. Um, so here are the features including time and amount. The target variable is class. When it's one, it means it's a fraud. Uh, when it's zero, it means it's not. So here the split column is added by Ludwig. It helps Ludwig to put uh, the examples into train, test, uh, and validation. So this is not a uh, feature and you don't need to worry about it. Credit base will take care of this. So Let's look at how many of the examples are fraud. So this is a highly unbalanced data set. Um, most of the case are not fraud. And remember this, and this will help us evaluate our model later. All right, now let's create our first model. So before you create a model, we need to create a new model repository. Let's call it credit card fraud demo one. So model repository is a Git-like repository. It's easy for you to collaborate with your team and track the model lineage. Let's select the connection here. We're using the public data set. And the data set name here is credit card fraud. It's already selected. And we're going to predict class. So here you can 
toggle on and off if you want to remove a feature. Uh, if you scroll down, you can see the split feature we mentioned before has already been unselected. It only tells uh, PrettyBase how to split your data into train test validation. And if this is the first time you create models in PrettyBase, I recommend you select the default, which is Explore Suggested Models, where you will get uh, a set of baseline models, which is a great way for you to um, get a few models um, and see which one performs best. And now let's click Train. So here you can see we have six models. Some of them are created using uh, basic neural networks and note because this is a data set with uh, tabular features only so we have a default light GBM model and now the model is queued for example we can click into the uh, GBM model and this is the um, architecture of the model we combine all the features and go into a tree framework Let's take a look at another one. Let's take a look at the basic neural network. So here we have input feature, pre-processing, um, encoder, and going to a combiner. So once you have those uh, models queued, you can um, look at the config, play with it. And once the model is finished training, you see the status change to ready. While we're waiting for the model to finish training, I want to show you three very cool techniques you can use when dealing with class imbalance in PrettyBase. So when you create a new model, you can go to the parameters tab. Let's go to the dataset pre-processing section. Here, when you click the drop down, it shows you three advanced parameters. You can oversample minority or undersample majority. Another thing you can do is go to this type drop down and click stratify. Here you can select a feature you want to use for stratified sampling and then specify the probabilities you want to use. The last one is also a common one you can use when dealing with imbalanced data set is to go to this class section and uh, under the loss options for output features you can adjust the positive class weight when calculating the loss function for example you can give the minority class higher weight and this parameter is the same one used in PyTorch now the model's finished training, you see the model set is changed to ready. And for demo purposes, I'm going to use a model repository that I have created before. So here you can see uh, the ROC score for each model. And previously we mentioned that this model's data set is highly unbalanced between the two classes. Um, and uh, so, I would say compared to the ROC score, the precision recall curve um, and the precision recall specifically are more important. So let's click into a few models to see how it performed. Let's start with the gen generally strong basic neural network model. So you can see the uh, learning curve here. The model seems to converge after eight epochs. And the ROC curves looks pretty good. However, uh, the precision recall curve doesn't look very well. It's not very smooth. And especially here, we can see the precision is high, uh, but the recall is pretty low. And this reflected in the confusion matrix, meaning the model failed to classify some of the fraud cases. So let's see if we can find a better model. So generally for tabular data set, our LightGBM model performs really well. And let's take a look at that. Again, let's uh, look at the learning curve for the loss. 
it converged after uh, about seven epochs. And if you look at the precision recall metric, so this model has a lot higher uh, in the recall score. And uh, you can see the precision recall curve here is very smooth and looks really nice. And again, very good ROC curve. The confusion matrix here also showed us the model is able to classify the fraud cases really well, given this is a highly imbalanced data set. So I would say um, out of the six models, uh, this is the best performing model. I'm not going to go through each model. So when you create yours, you can play with it. Um, so this is a quick demo that shows you how easy it is to find a best performing model after um, exploring the suggested models.